Huge thanks to the world's largest therapy service, BetterHelp, for sponsoring this video. Through BetterHelp's online services, you can connect to a network of 25,000 licensed and experienced professional therapists to find the therapist that is custom-picked for you. Even better, you have therapy with scheduling flexibility at an affordable price. If your therapist isn't the right fit for you, you can switch to a different professional at no additional charge. Here's how it works. Click our link in the description and answer a few questions about your therapy needs. Then BetterHelp matches you with the right therapist. Your sessions are on your time via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule live sessions when you'd like. Mental health is essential to us here at CinemaSit, so we encourage you to connect to help. Get 10% off your first month using our link, betterhelp.com slash cinemasins, and try BetterHelp today. That's betterhelp.com slash cinemasins. I thought this was a Super 8 nod to old school film, but then the shot widens here as the camera pulls forward and kicks my speculative ass by proving it was a wide shot all along. I will take a sin off, but nothing short of rampant nudity and Fleetwood Mac covers will make me remove another sin. Is there any reason why all the cop cars stopped and parked so far away from one another, other than a nice shot composition for the film's director? This officer lifts this sheet blanket as if to look under it, but only lifts it high enough to actually maybe see the victim's arm and nothing else. You ought to come take a look at this. Cliche. Nothing is ever good in the basement of a horror film. Just once I want to see this turned on its head and everyone is just shocked by the sick gym setup they got going on. Really sad these old people died. Looks like they were really getting their pump on. That's gross, Sheriff. Damn it, Bill. I'm talking about getting your reps in. Keep your head out of the gutter. Using a $2 bill to snort cocaine is a weird flex, but you do you, currently unknown cocaine-loving person. You know what they say about too much of a good thing. That it's how Scrat slowly poisoned the Ice Age franchise? You're special. There ain't nobody else out there like you. This is a lie for most of you, if I'm being honest. There are a lot of people out there like you. Try being less average. You're a f***ing sick symbol. Immediately following up that statement with In the Summertime by Mungo Jerry makes it impossible for me to separate that statement from Mungo Jerry. So now I'm just thinking about sex with Mungo Jerry. In case you confused it with Houston, Texas. The van to the porn shoot says plowing service on the side, and I love good wordplay, and I like me some puns, but this is an erection too far. But also, how is a plowing service supposedly being run out of a van? The amount of white space needed to get this script to that many pages. What about you, Maxine? What's your American dream? To stare out the window and not answer your questions. Seeing an unexpected cock in a movie where you'd expect to see cock barking this far from the pump. Because you got that X factor. Roll credits. You know, if you tilt the camera up from the nozzle, it'll look like he's using his You know, I keep having a dream where I say the same thing and Roger Deakins kicks me off the set of A Beautiful Mind. But also, it'll look like he's using his was the name of my middle school ska band. You got missing persons, tractors for sale, and Jim dishing out the dirt. But the real mystery is whether or not they ever rented this lamp on account of there being no contact info. Hey, I don't want to have to wear a hard hat to make a living. Do you? Somehow indie porn that may or may not sell is this guy's last swing before taking a nine to five, and I find that foolish and stupid. I understand not wanting to take a real job, but shooting an experimental porn out on a farm is maybe not the best last resort to fend off the inevitable. Negativity attracts negative results. Well, I mean, negativity sure worked out well for Triumph the Insult Comic Dog, and for Bill Maher, and CinemaSins, and Tom Hanks. I hate one of them dog. Same here. That's why I'm very aware that the big pile of it that the van can't help but drive through was not on the road in any of the previous shots. And even if it was, all the other cars in front of them should have pulverized it already. Unless Wayne is driving Serpentine to keep his tires warm while foreshadowing character deaths. Movie well, wants us to think that Howard answers the door with a gun because he's a murdering fool. That may as well be true, but I'd say it has more to do with Wayne knocking like an asshole. This wasn't what I had in mind when I agreed to help out on your film. Did he not tell her it was a porno? Or did he just not tell her that two of the co-stars like making out in the van in front of other people? RJ, it's smart. When did you become such a prude? It's not hard to tell that RJ's arc as a character will be mostly taking his words from his ass to his mouth. Because it is possible to make a good, dirty movie. Do dirty movies even exist on a continuum of good to bad? Or is it possible they occupy a fluidic space where the variation is more slippery to sticky? No one will be seated while they walk in real time the distance from the park van to the guest house. Oh, Dan, that's my future fiancé you're eyeballing there. Future fiancé. Well, it's better to beg for forgiveness and ask for permission. I disagree super hard, if only because this is exactly what my college girlfriend did. I reckon it's about high time we cut to the chase and we give the people what they want to see. This story is going to keep winking at the audience, isn't it? It's like the writers can't help themselves. They just need to let us know that they know we are watching and that we like to watch because we are perverts. I mean, cinephiles. 
which honestly doesn't sound much better. There's a scene here that we can't show because we don't want you to think we're cinephiles. I mean, perverts. Anyway, the scene is using a 4-3 aspect ratio, but doesn't expertly utilize it to capture all the details in the frame that it obviously could. It's almost like RJ is not even trying to make his good comic book movie. She walks past the window where they are filming the porno, and the camera sure seems to be pointed in such a way that Maxine would be obvious in the background. Well, that's because I'm not treating it like pornography, but it's cinema. My failed attempt at explaining to my parents what had been recorded over the VHS of Encino Man somehow makes it into the script. People's eyes are gonna pop out of their damn skulls when they see this. Every independent filmmaker ever. I was born for this line of work. Uh, you didn't do nothing. Objectively, he literally did have to work. You good, but you ain't that good. She will then do an R-rated version of the Harry Met Sally fake orgasm scene, but she's fully naked, and there's no one around to say I'll have what she's having. But honestly, I'm surprised it's this guy's first time hearing about faked orgasms. This alligator scene is not only an interesting representation of the danger to Maxine's life, of which she is blissfully unaware, but it also serves to establish the danger in and around this body of water, which will come into play for multiple characters. It's a quick injection of suspense that deserves some recognition. An old lady at a distance. An old lady a little closer. An old lady a little closer than that. An old lady a little closer than that. An old lady ever so slightly further away. Hello? As everyone knows, if you open the front door to a stranger's house and say, hello, but hear nothing in response, you are then welcome to explore the home at will. She is 100% spying right now, yo. Despite the rest of this movie, this here is some shady sh An old lady creepily standing behind you. It's got a good taste. <laughs> RJ is right. This is definitely cinema, and it is definitely getting a sip. Movie is trying to force me to examine the parallels between these two different lemonade scenes, and I say it is a simple beverage and should remain so both literally and metaphorically. No! Not only drinking the creepy lemonade from the creepy old lady, but absolutely chugging that sh I should probably get back now. Saying that instead of... It's got a good taste. Come with me. But what if I can only get off if daddy ultimately shows up? I may have said too much. I'm just taking right before the first war. Believe it or not, my hour served in both. Whatever you say, creepy old lady, I will attest that you went to the moon if you get out of my way and let me out of this house. I was a dancer in those 30 years. And then the war came, so. And during war, no one wants to watch women dance. What are you doing? Touching you, sweet Caroline. Since they never show a reason why they need actual milk in the bucket, I'm going to say that this is just wasteful. It would only make him angry. You would like daddy when he's angry. Writing Bruce Banner into your script, but not casting him. Girls who look directly into the camera in a porn video. Take me right out of the scene if the girl knows there is a camera. I mean, it takes morally depraved men who watch porn right out of the scene if the girl knows there is a camera there. The delicious but always sinful tubed meats. Isn't it strange watching her doing it with him? As long as the camera is running. So the camera changes things. That's right. <laughs> Whatever you have to tell yourself, Mr. Porn Producer Man. All she asked was if it was a little strange to see another man screwing your girlfriend. And I kind of think it has to be that, no? Only a psychopath could watch that and feel nothing solely because a camera was turned on. Take it from me. Letting outdated traditions control how you live your life will get you nowhere. Take it from me, this reasoning never gets you out of a speeding ticket. The fact of the truth of the matter is... The fact of the truth of the matter is... And they can't look away neither. That's right. We're like a foxy car wreck. David Cronenberg's pitch for Crash. Which is how I know that this new home video market is set to explode. Oh, bullsh**. You know that from watching Boogie Nights just like me. Thus begins the silliest scene in the movie. A movie which is beyond lucky to have a guitar playing stud and a female star with the voice of an angel. And they're playing one of my favorite songs of all time, Landslide by Fleetwood Mac. And I could overlook the whole thing were it not for this guy's outrageous guitar playing skills. Because when they get to the solo, he plays both parts on one guitar, which is exactly how Lindsey Buckingham does it. But Lindsey Buckingham is Lindsey Buckingham, a top 10 guitarist of all time. How does some 70s porn actor know how to nail the solo and the back part of this song at the same time. Sure, it's not impossible, but it denotes either massive talent or a massive number of hours dedicated to practicing. And why does the camera mysteriously not show any finger work or the fretboard during the solo? If he is that good, then he could be uber famous as a musician. And yeah, maybe he'd rather f*** on film than be a rock star, but I'm pretty sure rock stars get to f*** as often as they want. I want to do a scene in the movie. This reaction to the landslide performance is somehow stranger than mine. I am the executive producer, which means I get a word. Executive producers. It's like she's drinking the same Kool-Aid as Pearl and becoming intoxicated with the idea of being famous. If only her name was Budweiser instead of Lorraine, then she might have survived this movie. Hey, what does it they say? Life imitates art? 
It's the other way around. It's not. It's actually life imitates art far more than art imitates life. And that is either a mistake or an extremely subtle way to teach us a little about how much RJ is trying to fake it until he makes it, just like the rest of them. Better add a sip. Then remove one just in case. You just want more sex in the movie. Well, first of all, he's the producer of a porn film. So yes, he does want more sex in the movie. On the one hand, I feel sorry for this dude because he's about to film his girlfriend f***ing another guy. But on the other hand, he's a porn director who only moments earlier defended sex on film as different than romantic sex due to the presence of a camera. So, thematically, this probably represents a turning away from God for this character. So, I guess that one is just an actual sin. Oh, sh Pearl is fully charged! If you would have told me that there was going to be a shower scene in this movie, I would have believed you. If you would have told me that it would be relatable, I would not have believed you. You should refrigerate mayonnaise after opening, or at a minimum, put the lid back on. Few things are more on the nose than foreshadowing a death with Don't Fear the Reaper by Blue Oyster Cult. Imagine watching your girlfriend go from prude to porn star in a matter of hours, and then you get stabbed 40 times, and then you die. We never get to see the confused blood spatter expert try to understand how nearly all the blood ended up on the headlights. Everyone conveniently sleeps through this murder and its interpretive dance epilogue. RJ? Being surprised your boyfriend isn't in your bed the night after you surprised him by f***ing a different dude on camera for said boyfriend's porno film. RJ left the door to the house open like an asshole, probably letting flies in and all sorts of wildlife. I'm shocked this didn't result in that alligator being the one to creepily cuddle up next to Maxine. Who quietly comes up behind people and touches them without a warning? F you, Wayne, and your well-timed jump scare bullshit. This guy's overnight underwear. I'm gonna catch tetanus from this sh Well, not instantaneously. Jesus, calm down. There's another light down in the cellar. Can you go get it? I would yell no and run the f away. But this girl seems enchanted by this place, so she will probably do exactly what he just said. Well, isn't that just the cutest little pitchfork stab you've ever seen? Old people can be so adorable sometimes. Covering up your murder victims the same way a house cat covers up its poop. Are these missing persons, previous victims of Pearl and Howard? Discuss. Everything okay, Pops? Answering the door with your d all out. Also, the not blocking of this d means they must have spent some time on set actually doing the blocking for his d But RJ, despite his hard on for independent cinema, spends more time d blocking than he does on blocking the d Pearl moves slowly. It's just something you have to accept. Otherwise, this would be a 75 minute movie. And the talking leads to touching. And the touching leads to sex. And then there is no mystery left. <laughs> As the old naked lady blood caresses Maxine, I will just go ahead and admit that this is some of the f***ing creepiest shit I've ever seen. And I suppose the movie deserves a send-off for that. He finds a car mostly submerged in the pond, and yeah, those missing people on the milk carton were definitely previous Pearl victims, and I'm adding a sin for you, the viewer, not believing me when I first brought it up. You were all, that's preposterous sins, guy. There were missing people on the milk carton because there were always missing people on the milk cartons back then. But surprise, asshole, missing kids on milk cartons didn't even become a thing until the 80s. So both you and the movie are wrong. Oh hey, it's that axe from the beginning. I'm sure it will be used for more than an homage. Shit. I know exactly what's going on. We're all gonna act like this old man could lift that gun fast enough to get a kill shot off and that Jackson wouldn't have hit him in his brittle aging jaw before he got it up. That woman was in my bed touching me! I'd like to think I sounded more masculine and less terrified than this when I lost my virginity, but that would be a lie. If you have to smash something on YouTube, make it that subscribe button. If you have to smash a basement door to escape murder as senior citizens, make it the panel closest to the lock. Howard shows up and chops off Lorraine's fingers because he is the goddamn Flash or something. He was just way out at the pond shooting Lindsay Buckingham. It's a huge cheat to cut those two scenes back and forth and then have him seem to cover a mile in 10 seconds just so you can surprise us that she is not able to escape the basement. Bitch. <laughs> but also, what if the gator had been asleep? Or full? <laughs> Escaping Howard and Pearl on foot should be pretty easy, as they are clearly not as spry as they were back in their heyday. They may have had the element of surprise with everyone else, but now that Maxine is aware of their bloodlust, you would figure it would just be a matter of running far away enough that they have to contend with their shitty old people vision. Sick and tired of never getting what I want. You know I want to give it to you, pal. But I'm tired too. This whole thing is about Howard not being able to lay the pipe because of his weak ticker. And yes, I meant ticker and not pecker. So is the main takeaway that heart medication could have prevented all this bloodshed? You're the most beautiful woman I'd ever seen. Mm, not anymore. Always. Skip 
Invictus and the gratuitous missionary work that follows. Lorraine throws the axe down before she even gets shot so it could be there for the beginning of the movie. I told her to stay in the damn cellar. Once again, Howard and Pearl have managed to move at the speed of light in order to be here right now. They were full on f***ing and had no idea Maxine had run to the main house. But because this is a horror movie, they finished up, got dressed, and f***ing Carl lewis it to this f***ing front porch in order to shoot Lorraine as she ran out of the house. Eat. My. F this movie is great. But the repeated cutting back to the bigot sermon on TV during Pearl and Maxine's showdown is heavy-handed as f Recoil ex machina. Wildest thing about this ending is that Maxine has no proof that her boyfriend, the producer, is dead. But she either doesn't care or just assumes he's dead. She's driving off into the night, and for all she knows, her boyfriend is back in that barn hiding. He's not, but goddammit, you know what I mean. There she is. My beautiful little daughter, Maxine. So she was a daughter of the TV preacher all along? That's absurdly coincidental. What do you think is on it? Well, by the looks of everything, I see one goddamn f***ed up horror picture. Good question, bad answer. But Maxine seems to have driven off into the sequel, so who called the cops? Them alligator bit my hand off. That is one big pile of shit. Hurry it up, we ain't gonna be long in there. Tommy, how's the peeping? Tommy, how's the peeping? Tommy, 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 Tommy. Blue shadows on the trail. I'm out, come out wherever you are. Call Mr. Plow, that's my name, that name again is Mr. Plow. What are you doing? I'm old! Give me a kiss already. Ah!